150 million years ago, a torpedo-shaped, armor-covered predatory fish swam virtually unchallenged in the presence of dinosaurs. Fast forward to the present day, and relatives of this beast still swim, nearly unchanged in design, reigning as freshwater megafauna. Gar are masters of evolution. They have survived beyond the dinosaurs and everything that came after, until their existence ran up against an inescapable fate, humans. I'm about to rock the boat, and this episode is about to make some waves. So if you're ready to join the fight, together, we stand the chance of saving these fish. Welcome to the Gar Wars, a conservation fish force has awoken. I caught a big fish once. Perhaps you remember my encounter with the blue catfish. How about that, boy? Holy cow. Well, if you thought that was an impressive freshwater river monster, you aren't going to believe your eyes when you see where this episode is headed. But before we get to catching, first, we gotta go fishing. On this wild fish chase, I will be working alongside the Gar guys, Hayden, Max, and Florian. Hayden is a graduate student from Texas A&M who is researching alligator gar for his master's project, while Max and Florian, two wild Dutchmen and experienced gar wranglers from the Netherlands, are working in tandem with Hayden's research as part of their graduation internship and the completion of their master's degree. These guys love fish more than you can possibly comprehend. So for me and Mario, it's an honor to document their process and share in their fight for the conservation of this species. So right now what we're doing is using a scanner, the Humminbird system to determine if there are fish in this area. And we are seeing little marks show up on this scanner that definitely look as if they could be very large fish, which is a good sign. Max, do you like the spot? We definitely like the spot. It has some slack water, and that's basically what we need to catch these fish because they really like to be out of the current. And we can actually efficiently set our nets, otherwise the current would take them and the fish won't swim in or they would just bounce off. So this seems to be a really good spot to catch them. Okay, so this sounds like this may be a spot for us to cast the next gill net. Let's see if this is the lucky location to catch a monster gar. This simple looking yet high tech device reveals many of the water's secrets, including hidden obstacles like trees, water depth, and if we are lucky, the distinct body signatures of fish. Rod and reel is a very sporty way to fish for gar, but setting a hook in their bony mouths can be nearly impossible and places an incredible amount of stress on the fish. So to lessen the impact, we will fish with gill nets. 200 feet wide by 10 feet tall, we carefully stretch these supersized nets across the river, one upstream and another downstream. Bright yellow buoys help to keep the net afloat, while also working as a signal to the team. If a fish swims into and becomes entangled in the net, these bright indicators will bob up and down, alerting that a fish has been caught. Okay, we officially have the first two nets set in the water. The next part of looking for gar is called waiting. We're gonna spend about an hour just watching the nets, hoping that eventually the buoys go beneath the surface. Now, if one goes all the way down, Florian and Max said that that pretty much means you've got a monster fish. So we're gonna keep our fingers crossed. We like the spots where the nets are set. Now we sit and wait, and see what happens. The term river monster is an all too familiar description of a seemingly malicious animal that lurks beneath the surface of our planet's flowing freshwater systems. In fairness, it's also the title of my all-time favorite television series. However, it's important to redefine what the gar truly is, because the term monster carries with it an unfairly assigned, notorious reputation. Worldwide, there are seven species of these toothy fish, three of which we may encounter in this area. The spotted gar, which is beautifully speckled in an uncoordinated array of spots. The long-nosed gar, named for its definitively slender and noticeably elongated snout. And the alligator gar, which hails as the largest and seemingly most menacing of the gar gang. Yes, they are big, fast, armor-scaled, and equipped with rows of needle-like teeth. 
but don't let their appearance snap your initial assumptions into false accusations. Guard do not attack humans, and honestly, the only well-documented bites derive from anglers that are accidentally bitten while trying to remove fishing hooks. Yet it was uneducated fear-mongering dating back nearly 100 years that put the alligator gar on a hit list of North America's dangerous animals. Sadly, populations have been extirpated in many areas of their natural range. And if things couldn't get worse, now these fish face a new threat, bow hunting. But before we kick the door open on that sensitive topic, first, we better check the nets. Okay, right now we're motoring up river on our way to check one of the nets that's been sitting for about 40 minutes. What? We got some movement in a buoy. There may be a fish up in this net. Okay, we might have something. All right, let's do it. Right now, just keeping eyes on those buoys if there's a fish in there. We don't want to startle it because while they may get tangled up in the nets, it's also rather easy for them to get out unless we get the net actually curled around the fish. So, fingers crossed. We really like the way that we had this set originally. Oh, for real? Oh, Lorna, Lord, no, that's no cool. Oh, nice. Wow. Yes. All right, look at that. Oh, wow. Is that good? Yep. Uh, yes, please. Okay, so right now what Max is doing is gently getting the net out of the gar's teeth. Very dangerous little procedure here. Gotta use what are called net hooks. This is so that he does not lose a finger in the process. Take all the time. <laughs> this is my first encounter ever with a long nose gar. I've never seen one of these before. It's beautiful. Look yeah. how bluish in coloration. It's a decent sized long nose, too. There it is. There it is. There it is. Amazing. Okay, look at that. That is a long-nosed gar. Now, long-nosed gar gets its name because of that elongated snout. If you take a good look there, that mouth is filled full of needle-sharp teeth. Now, they specialize in eating fish, and you can see that if you were a fish and you got stuck in those jaws, it would be a very bad day. And look at the blue iridescence in coloration. This is an absolutely beautiful fish. And just like the alligator gar, they are covered in these armored scales. Big eyes, bulbous, right on the side of the head. They have incredible vision. And that streamlined body basically makes them a long, muscular missile. Underwater, these fish have incredible speed. Now, these fish can stay out of water for a significant amount of time. And right now, the fish is secreting this very thick, slippery mucus from its scales. That's helping to keep it hydrated. We don't want to keep it out of the water for too long. What a beautiful fish. I just can't get over how incredible and how prehistoric looking these animals are. Now I would say this is about average size for a long-nosed gar. They get quite a bit bigger than this in some instances, but for seeing a long-nosed gar for the first time, I don't think it can get much better than this. And the river always makes you work for it. You're not gonna get the alligator gar on the first catch, but seeing this species is definitely something that we hoped would happen while out here working with the gar guys. Second. All right, let's keep checking the net. This is a good spot. I think we oh, have one. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Oh, that's a huge, that's a big fin, man. Oh, boy. Perfect. Look at that. Our first alligator bar. Definitely have to watch out for that snout and that skull full of needle sharp teeth. Right. So what we're doing right now is safely getting the gar out of the net. The calmer we can keep the fish, 
the less stress we put on it, the better for its health and safety. That is a very good size alligator gar. And right now, we slide down a little bit, okay? You can see it's just caught with its teeth. Yep. And that's what usually happens with the really big fish. They get caught only with their teeth. Up the small tube. Okay, fish is free. Wow. Hold on. It's a big <laughs> slimer, this one. Look at my hands, just covered. Do you smell, do you smell it? In gar slime. Yeah, the smell. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, that was gold. Oh, yeah, very distinct smell as compared to other fish. Eyes covered with the towel. Yep. It experiences less stress. Yep, just like alligators. Okay, I'll keep a towel a over towel. it. Right. Okay, cool. Let's get into the shade and uh, collect some biometrics. Alligator gar. There it is. The gar guys collect meaningful biometrics on any alligator gar they catch, including the fish's head length, 22 and a half. its full body length, 146 centimeters. Wow. And the girth circumference, 58. The base of its dorsal fin is tagged with a unique identification flag and a micro pit tag is quickly inserted so that if the fish is caught in the future, they can quickly scan and ID it. Are you guys ready for this? Meet the alligator gar. Look at the size of that fish, a true river monster, and one of the most ancient fish species that still swims on this planet. Remember, the relatives of this fish date back 100 million years, which means that this fish's cousins were swimming amongst the dinosaurs. Obviously, the head is incredibly interesting, and when I turn it like this right toward you and you look down on top of the snout, they get the name alligator gar from that wide, broad snout. It looks just like the snout of an alligator. And one other cool aspect about the skull is the fact that these bones are interlocking with this fleshy cartilage that allows the skull to expand. So if this fish catches a prey item larger than it can fit in its mouth, its skull actually stretches almost like a snake, and that's able to position its prey and swallow it down whole. Now when you look down the length of this fish's body, it is incredibly streamlined. Let me lift it up just a little bit, like a large muscular missile. Oh, come here, buddy. When you get down to the tail, the dorsal fin is way down near the caudal fin, and that tail works like a rudder to help propel this fish forward through its watery environment. This fish is about as slippery as it gets in this direction, but if you run your hand backwards, it almost feels like sandpaper. When you see the fish coming up to the surface like that and biting, it's not because it's aggressive, it's actually taking a breath of air. Remember, this species is very unique in that it has bimodal respiration. It is able to breathe either at the surface or through its gills. And it can take 30 to 40 years for a fish to reach just this size, so getting protections in place to make sure that the future of this species is preserved is incredibly important. And the work that the Gar guys are doing and our ability to feature this fish species will hopefully help to get protections in place so that these fish are on the planet for 100 million more years. What an incredible giant. There's no question about it, that was a big fish. But in the Gar universe, our first catch was simply a megafauna candidate in training. Now, before we got all excited about checking the nets, I started to mention bow fishing and how this lawless sport is taking a noticeable toll on the future of these living relics. Remember when I warned you about rocking the boat? It's time to put on your life jacket because a tidal wave of conservation is building on the horizon. We need your support, but before you can help, it's important to witness what we are fighting for. Alligator gar are one of the most long-lived fish in the Western Hemisphere, and it can take more than a decade for them to reach maturity. Once reproductive age has been achieved, males and females migrate from the protection of deep waterways and into shallow floodplains where breeding takes place. Sadly, it's this intimate setting where the largest number of mature adults are being killed by bow fishermen. Warning, the following images are graphic and may be disturbing to younger viewers. Bow fishing is a brutal sport, 
that is simply defined as shooting fish with a bow and arrow. Now, before we rush to judgment, it's important to recognize that not all bow fishermen and their practices are bad. Technically, this hunting style is not illegal, and in some instances, it can be beneficial to the ecosystem. One example is the harvesting of invasive Asian carp. The problem exists when their arrows are intentionally shot toward apex predators, like alligator gar. Gar are considered rough or trash fish, and while some people do consume their catch, the majority dump lifeless carcasses along the river embankments. Over time, the trophy hunting destruction of these long-lived fish will prove detrimental to the necessary balance of our river ecosystems. And without restrictions, you can understand why these living dinosaurs find themselves at risk of going extinct. Right now we are coming up on a buoy which is very low in the water. This could be a fish. Check this out. Way sunk down as compared to the other ones. This could be a fish. All right, so what do we want to do, guys? We want to grab the float line, see okay. where the fish exactly is at. Okay. And then we see uh, from which way it swam in and get it on board so we can tag it. So gently, once the, notice the boat's over it, gently lift it up. It's in a lot of bubbles right here. Yeah. There is a huge fish in this net. It may be Without question, the biggest fish you guys are ever going to see. We gently started to pull up the net. I saw its snout. Its head may be two feet in length alone. So we're waiting for Mario to catch up. We were checking a different net. Cameras are running. This is going to be our river monster, guys. Now it's just a matter of getting it on the boat. I'm estimating that this, this one is two meter. It, it, could be, it could be a 250 pound fish. Giant! Huge, Giant. huge! Get your camera ready! Boat's position as well. That's right. That's right, boys. That's right. It sounds right at me. Oh my god, that is giant. That is giant. Red. 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 Max? That's right. That's right. Orion, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We need to figure out a way to get the lead line around it. Floyd, I need your help too. Yeah, I will. Okay, got it. Just give me a go. I need your help too, Can I come over here? Yep, 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 let me get out of the way. I'm gonna wait the boat from the side. This is too, too tight. It's good, it's good, it's good. Oh my god, this is a big fish. This is a huge fish. Oh! I got your leg, I got your leg. Whoa. That one is not coming out of here anymore. Oh my god, this might be the biggest we have. Wow! It's a huge fish, guys! Wow! Wow! <laughs> Okay, what do we got to get it up into the boat? We need oh your help. Oh my god. Okay, where, do you, where do you want me? Where do you want me? Right in the middle next okay. to us. Okay. It is an absolute river monster. Holy mackerel. Hey, I think. Oh, oh, my fingers are oh, oh, Okay, take it. You ready? One, two, three. Yes! Woo! It is oh, absolutely massive. All right, slide it back. Okay. Yes! Fish is secure. Oh that is my gosh. It's massive. Absolutely massive. So right now we're getting the net off of the fish. We're going to get into a shaded area, start collecting the biometrics, and we're definitely going to take a good look. This is what river monster legends are made of. This alligator gar is... This is the biggest fish I've ever seen. No questions asked. So their namesake, where it comes from, that reptile, you can see how closely this fish resembles a reptile of that magnitude. I'm just, I'm, I'm beside myself right now. This is crazy. This fish is huge. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There's fish those, is free. Fish is free from the net. Okay, we gotta get the net out of the boat here. Guys, this is incredible. And this is your last day in the field. Our very yes. last day. And it may be your biggest fish. It may be our biggest fish. I mean, to share this moment with you guys, it's... <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's I mean, this is where the legends come from. Fish of this size is what they write stories about. I can't, I never imagined we would catch one this big. As is the case with all alligator gar, we work quickly yeah. to collect biometric data. 
length, girth, identification flag, and insertion of a micro pit tag, which stands for Passive Integrated Transponder. For clarification, this is not a tracking chip. It's an identification tag that can quickly be scanned to ID this fish if it is caught again in the future. Prepare to have your mind absolutely boggled because this is the biggest alligator gar we could have possibly come across. This fish measures almost eight feet in length and is close to 220 pounds. If that doesn't define a river monster, I don't know what does. I can barely fit my arms all the way around it. It feels like I'm holding on to a dolphin, or probably more accurately to say, holding on to something that is a dinosaur. Remember, these creatures have been on the planet for over a hundred million years. Look at the size of this fish's head. Its jaws are massive. Its eyeballs, enormous. And its skull absolutely dwarfs my hand when I place it up on top. The armored plating that runs down the length of this fish is so thick, you can easily see why Native Americans turn these ganoid scales into arrowheads. In fact, you could turn this entire fish's back into an armored breastplate if you needed to. Of course, that's certainly not something we would ever need to do, and it's probably taken this fish close to 50, if not more, years to grow to this proportion. Let me see if I can lift it up just a little bit in the water. It's a little more buoyant, so it's a little easier. Look at the size. Absolutely massive. That's taking all my strength just to get it. And when I turn it like this, look at the length of the body. Look at the dorsal fin, the caudal fin. Absolutely gigantic. I have never seen a creature of this magnitude. My entire life, I have been fascinated by the alligator gar. Similar to the snapping turtle, this is a creature that was just considered a nuisance, a trash fish technically. And at one point in time, they tried to eradicate this species off the face of the planet. Because they have this menacing looking snout and those big teeth, people were afraid that a fish of this size would grab onto their legs, pull them down into the murky depths and eat them. But you can see how docile this animal truly is. In fact, it's so docile, I'm comfortable getting just within inches of those teeth. This is not a bloodthirsty, ravenous killer. This is a gentle, sentient being feasting on other fish and doing its best to stay out of the sight of humans. Now, the biggest threat an animal of this proportion faces truly is man. Can you fathom coming out into the environment and shooting an animal like this with a bow and arrow? It absolutely breaks my heart to think that these fish are hunted for sport. Now, if we could get the alligator gar listed as a game fish that would limit the number of fish that were killed for sport. Something of this magnitude is an important part of the breeding population. This is without question a female. The females dwarf the males in size and it's her genetics that will carry on the future. <laughs> Got splashed in the face there by that gulp of air. It's her genetics that will carry on the future of these fish. And in a protected stretch of river like this, that is how a creature of this proportion managed to grow this big. This is something that deserves to be living here on our planet. They are doing an incredibly positive thing for the environment by balancing the ecosystem. This is considered megafauna. This is the apex predator within this river ecosystem. And without these fish swimming freely, the river will not be in proper balance. I just truly can't get over the size of this fish. There are virtually no words that can describe the experience of being in the water with an animal like this. And over the past 24 hours, we have spent a considerable amount of time learning from the Gar guys. Here we are on our last day, checking our final nets, and we managed to land a truly epic river monster, an ancient relic, a living dinosaur. We've collected the biometrics, and now it's time for this fish to carry on its genetic traits into the future. This has been an experience unlike anything I have ever been a part of before. Finally getting to see a truly monstrous sized alligator gar in its natural habitat. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. <laughs> this was something else. The current Texas state record caught on rod and reel 
weighed 279 pounds, while the all-time world record tips the scales at 327 pounds. Our fish measured 7 feet 5 inches in length, estimated weight of 220 pounds. So while we won't be awarded any Guinness accolades, I think we can all agree that this is one very big fish. What's it like just swimming alongside one of these giants? Yeah, it's really like cool. swimming with a dinosaur, swimming with the most awesome animal on the planet. I mean, this is a great example to show how non-aggressive these fish are. I mean, literally, you can kiss this guy on the, or this girl on the nose right now. Nose bump. For anybody who was afraid of alligator gar, this proves right here, Max is inches away from those teeth. No signs of aggression whatsoever. Incredible. What a sentient, peaceful being. Unbelievable. All right, you guys ready to release the beast? We're ready. All right, here she goes. See you later, big fish. We will never be able to convince all archers to put down their bows, but we can lessen the number of fish they kill. To do that, we need fish and wildlife management, not only in Texas, but all states, to list the alligator gar as a game fish. What this will do is limit the number of fish that can be harvested on a daily and ultimately yearly basis. It also puts restrictions in place that will prevent the needless slaughter of these animals during breeding season, when they are most susceptible to the atrocities of archers. I know that the fight for these regulations will anger those who enjoy bow fishing, but it's important for the future of these fish that we preserve the largest breeding individuals, as it's their genetics that will ensure this species isn't driven to extinction. If you want to join the fight, and battle on the front lines of the Gar Wars, I encourage you to take a stand. Speak out. Sign the petition that will give Alligator Gar a game fish status, and use your internet voice to share this link with as many people as possible. I believe that a conservation fish force has awoken, and we will make the difference that these fish cannot make for themselves. Together, we will create a new hope for the future these living dinosaurs.